Alessia, who was known as Queen Alessia, Saint Alessia, and Slave Queen Alessia, was an Edic woman who was responsible for leading the human revolt against the Aeliads in the First Era, liberating the human slaves of Cyrodiil from their confinement, and had established what is today known as the Cyrodiilic Empire. As Cyrodiil's first ruler, she created its newfound pantheon, known as the Eight Divines. After her death, she had become the first human saint, and her soul was placed in the center gem for the Amulet of Kings, establishing the magical barriers blessed by Akatosh to protect Tamriel from oblivion. Belharza, her son, succeeded her as the second ruler of Cyrodiil. Alessia's name was not given to her at birth, and is a twist on the name given to her by her followers, Al-Esh, which means High Highness. Alessia had gone by many titles, including that of Paravant, or the First, Perif, Esha, Paravanya, and Alashet, and of course, most famously, Alessia. Her one appellation, Paravant, which had translated to the first of its kind, given to her at her coronation ceremony, was meant to signify a mortal worthy of the majesty that is killing, questing, healing. From the name Paravant derived Paraval, Pavesh, Parathu, Perif, and Paravanya, which is the name Morehouse had given to her when they were lovers. Morehouse is also quoted in calling her the First Empress, Lady of Heaven, and Queen Utsirad. The Alessian Order is called so because of her appearing in the visions of Maruk, who then granted him her teachings. Very little is known of her early life and childhood. Men were heavily oppressed in her time, and as such, the names of her original tribe, family, or birth name were lost to history. However, what is known is that she grew up in the Aelid city known as Sard of Arlid, and at the time was known simply as Sard, and was a large slave residence where Aelids had herded in men from all across the Nibbin. Like her fellow humans in Cyrodiil, she lived a life of slavery under Aelid rule. She often prayed to Akatosh and the Aedra of her freedom from her elven overlords. The Aelids had primarily worshipped the Altamari Divines, However, they also worshipped and made dealings with the Dajic princes as well, mostly to keep their human slaves under control. The Nords of Skyrim had their own pantheon as well, whose ideals were mostly focused on human principles as opposed to more elven ideals. Alessia had begun to pray to this mixture of deities for aid to liberate her people from enslavement, and at Sangrator, a vision was blessed to Alessia by the Aedra. Alessia's prayers had finally been heard when she was given three visions by the Aedra at Sancrator. However, sources conflict with one another, one stating it was given by Kinnereth, and one saying it was gifted by Akatosh. In this moment, Oblivion was detached from Mundus, so the Aelids could not rely on Daedric aid. Once she was free, she had created a holy ground, and started a revolution against her elven masters. Kinnereth had sent her son, the Nordic half-god Morehouse, to assist Alessia in her uprising. Within this time, Morehouse and Alessia had become lovers. The Song of Pelennol tells of Morehouse being rather embarrassed by his appearance in front of Alessia. Nevertheless, he assisted her to rally the other human slaves for her cause. With Morehouse's assistance, Alessia raised enough men for an army, and from this moment she had become known as the Slave Queen Alessia. Kinnereth had also sent visions to her that would simply aid her to fight against her slave masters, and in the First Era 242, Alessia's third vision had come. When Pelena Whitestrake had walked into her encampment, doused in elven blood, this is when she understood that her second champion had finally come. As matters grew tenser, the humans quickly took authority over Cyrodiil, east of the Nibbin and Pelena Whitestrake and Morehouse quickly became the leading military heads of her army. Around the First Era, 242, Alessia's Rebellion had finally unleashed their fury upon their slave masters. Notably, Pelennol had become fabled for his ferocious bloodshed he had unleashed upon the elves of Cyrodiil, and Alessia herself had to pray to the Divines for their assistance to halt Pelennol's enraged and endless destruction, in which he would slaughter anyone who was in his path, Man or Mer. Around this time, High King Harold had taken over Skyrim and created the first human kingdom on Tamriel. He had managed to dispel the elves from Skyrim, and the human slaves of Cyrodiil had seen the opportunity to do the same. 
Around this time as well, Aelid regime over Cyrodiil was crippled, multiple city-states were fighting against one another for power, and a minority of Aelid nobles had sided with the human cause. Alessia used this time to take advantage over the civil conflicts to begin her insurrection. A pact was made between Skyrim, Alessia's forces, and any allied Aelids. The humans had strategized and drove the Aelids inward towards the White Gold Tower, forcing them into smaller and smaller groups around Lake Romare. Alessia's forces had the White Gold Tower surrounded, although they were hesitant to attack. Pelinal White Strike saw this as cowardly and stormed the White Gold Tower himself. In this period, Umeril the Unfeathered, the king of the Aelids, was in control over his Aelid armies. Umeril was likely of a divine bloodline, having an Aelid mother and a divine father from a Kalpa of prior origin. As such, he was able to match Pelinal in battle, and to further his power, he had made a pact with the Daedric Prince Meridia, and had used Aurorans, Daedra, in her service as soldiers for his armies of Aelids. Pelinal had defeated Umeril, but at the cost of his life, Umeril's soul had departed to Oblivion, where he waited for centuries for his inevitable return. Afterwards, Morahal stormed the city with the armies of Alessia, and managed to overrun the city. The remaining Aelid kings had tore Pelinal asunder, leaving only his head for Morehouse and eventually Alessia to discover. The remaining Aelid citizens were either killed, or were driven out of Cyrodiil. Even after Pelinal's death, the human revolt yet lingered, and after years of fighting for it, Alessia was finally able to take control over the province through White Gold Tower, forever terminating the great enslavement of mankind and the reign of the Aelids in Cyrodiil. And upon this time, Alessia was crowned first empress of the Empire of Cyrodiil. With the White Gold Tower taken over in the First Era 243, Alessia was crowned as the first empress of Cyrodiil, and some sources tell of Akatosh bestowing her the Amulet of Kings as holy proof of this title. Alessia's first hurdle as empress was to enact a religion for her people to follow. She was an astute politician, and understood her people had known no other gods other than that of the Aelids. She knew she had to choose carefully, as to not cause an uprising on either side that had given her the much-needed aid she desired. Her people could not adjust to either the Aelid nor the Nordic pantheon in full, to satisfy both parties, she enacted a religion that crossbred both pantheons, including less controversial gods like Akatosh from the Aelid pantheon, and accepting some of the more popular Nordic gods such as Debella and Kine, which she had renamed Kinnereth. She brushed the issue of Lorcan aside, but classified him as the missing ninth god, as a brother to the Eight Divines. The worship of the Eight Divines was well accepted along with the Empire and her rule itself, and would go on to become the most prominent religion across Tamriel for centuries to come. With the later addition of Talos many centuries later, it had become the Nine Divines, although back to the original Eight Divines following the signing of the White Gold Concordat in the Fourth Era after the Great War. Alessia's triumph over the Aelids was not achievable without the military aid of Skyrim. However, she also received a good bit of help from rebel Aelid lords as well. A number of Aelid princes did continue to rule portions of Cyrodiil after Alessia was crowned Empress, oddly, and despite overthrowing the ruling Aelid body in Cyrodiil, Alessia remained sensible to men and Myr alike. Near the closing of Alessia's reign, she laid in her deathbed and was visited by Akatosh, who had constrained her soul onto the Amulet of Kings before Pelinal's spirit had arrived to escort her to her afterlife. After Alessia's passing in the First Era 266, she was entombed in the crypts under Sancrator, although there are contradicting sources which state she is actually entombed on the site of what is today known as the Temple of the One, located in the Imperial City. The covenant that was made with Akatosh to keep Oblivion detached from Mundus was also carried out with her descendants. In this sense, Alessia was the first in line of the Dragonborn Emperors. Centuries later, Raymond Cyrodiil, the hero renowned for defeating the Akaviri invasion, would define the tradition of lighting the dragonfires and exchanging the Amulet of Kings as the rituals to crown the new ruler of Cyrodiil. Even during chaotic times in Cyrodiil's history, the dragonfires remained lit and kept Tamriel and otherwise Nern safe. 
It was in the Third Era, after Emperor Uriel Septim VII's assassination, along with the assassination of all known heirs to the throne, that Martin Septim, the last Dragonborn Emperor, with the Amulet of Kings, was able to seal the Gates of Oblivion with his death. Morehouse, also known as Morehouse Breath of Kine, or the First Breath of Man, was a mighty winged manbull or minotaur, and was a demi-prince or demi-god. Some tales tell of the hoop ring he had in his nose. He was a cultural hero to the Syro Nordics. Legends display him as the taker of the citadel, or white gold tower. He is typically associated with the Thum, and hence associated with Kine or Kinnereth. He was the lover of Alessia, and had bore the Lord's Mail, or also known as the Armor of Morehouse. He also fathered the first Minotaur, Emperor Belharza. Morehouse was the supposed son of Kine, though when Alessia requested guidance from the Handmaiden, believed to be Mara, Alessia voiced, Morehouse, your son, mighty and snorting, gore-horned, winged. When next he flies down, let him bring us anger. Tales also speak of Alessia flying atop him, suggesting she probably mounted atop his shoulders as if a war mount. He is told to have greeted the divine arrival of his friend Pelena Whitestrake with excited stomping and roaring. When Morehouse was injured by a volley of bird beaks, Pelinol had carried his friend to a needed healer. A renowned Khajiiti artist named Karim created a tapestry showing Morehouse and an army of rebel humans clashing with the Aliens at the White Gold Tower. Pelinol loved Morehouse as family, referring to him as nephew. While he held great strength and power compared to Pelinol, he did not share the madness that Pelinol was afflicted with. In a session of advice, Pelinol had consulted with Morehouse against pursuing love for Alessia, stating, we are Ada Amor, and change things through love. We must take care lest we beget more monsters on this earth. If you do not desist, she will take you, and you will transform all of Sirod if you do this." Morehouse had dismissed this advice as impossible to follow, and after Pelinol was killed after his battle with Umaril, Morehouse was the one to discover his disembodied head, still speaking, and the two had a conversation that is mostly lost to history. The Arabal A, one of the most ancient written documents from the First Era, is generally believed to be Morehouse's journal of sorts. One of his first tenets in it is, on the recording of all that haps, recounting Morehouse's dispute with and execution of the Nonscriptionists, a faction who was heavily against the documentation of historic events. The Arabal A includes all or partially of Pelinol's final moments and dialogue with Morehouse. Morehouse criticized Pelinol, or as he writes, his uncle, for going beyond Alessia's orders and in turn getting himself killed. Morehouse had also predicted that the blood made glorious warrior would one day rise again, and Pelinol had warned Morehouse that Umarel yet lived and would one day return. Morehouse had outlived his lover Alessia, whom he called Paravania, and when or if Morehouse died is unknown. During her reign, Morehouse and Alessia produced a child. Their son, Belharza, was one of the first Minotaurs. Belharza was born sometime within the early First Era, and as the firstborn child of Alessia and Morehouse. He was told to be a mix of Need and Minotaur. After his mother's death in the First Era 266, Belharza ruled over the Alessian Empire. During Belharza's reign, it is told that there were many alien ruling bodies in Malada, an alien citadel in Cyrodiil. Very little is known about his reign and life, as many documents and records from this time were destroyed after the rise of the Alessian Order. Confidential letters between him and his mother Alessia is held in the Library of Dusk in Cold Harbor, 
though its contents are vague and unknown. A fragmented document from an Alessian Order cult discursively entails that Belharza was in clashes with large allied infantries of sorts. One disputed translation of an ancient piece of a tablet known as the Belharza Stone claims that the harbingers of the xenophobic order may have openly clashed with Belharza, and forcefully exterminated the Minotaurs from the Empire. According to Nonus Caprinius, the Lessian Order extensively oppressed and executed Minotaurs under the influence of the Empire. He illustrated excerpts from the Belharza Stone in saying that there was much conflict between Belharza and the Alessian Order. Belharza is told to have eventually been killed while clashing with elves. After her soul was bound to the amulet, Akatosh had christened her as Saint Alessia, the first saint of her kind. Her followers later became known as the Alessian Order and had prevailed in rule over a large portion of Tamriel for decades. They gradually drove out the remaining aliens from Cyrodiil, and advocated harsh anti-elven policies across Tamriel for a good portion of the First Era. The Order had eventually thinned and died out, but Alessia's legacy and figurehead remained as a celebrated part of the Imperial Pantheon for years to come.